The Goat House is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL Week 9 game here every Wednesday with this video. Feel real good about the predictions this week. All kinds of content, even covering the trade deadline on the channel. But let's break down each game in Week 9. Starting with Thursday night football, the Texans at the Jets on Halloween. The Jets wearing those all black uniforms, and they are favored in this game, which is a little bit surprising given how much they are struggling, and the Texans are a pretty good team, but I guess you kind of can understand it. The Texans are now without digs for the year, and they're going to be missing Nico Collins for one more game here, and the Jets are kind of due, but I still like the Texans in this one. Close game. Give me 23-20. Thought about 20-17, to somewhere around that range, but I like 23-20 here. The Jets' key to winning, I feel like we say this every week, is running the football and running the football not in a split backfield, a split in terms of carries, but feed Bryce Hall, but Man, Rodgers goes rogue. He checks out a lot of runs, and they, they insist on being a pass, majority of a pass team, and it just doesn't work. And the Texans have not allowed quarterbacks to throw all over them. The only one that's thrown well on them, really, is Sam Darnold, and that was really early in the year. So I'm going to trust the Texans' stout pass defense here. Run defense could be a little bit better, but they'll do enough. I think the offense will find ways. What people aren't talking about right now, people are – just saying the Jets are struggling, Rodgers is struggling, that offense is struggling, it's just bad play calling, but the defense is, you know, it's not bad by any means, but it's it's declined since Robert Sala has been fired, So and the, they got to go against C.J. Stroud and Joe Mixon, the key here, I do think you can run the ball on the Jets, I think Joe Mixon has a pretty big game, so I like the Texans, it's, you know, you can see the upset, mainly because Vegas has the Jets favored, they know something, but it's so hard to predict that right now, I like the Texans, and you can use them as a teaser leg, Plus six and a half feels pretty good. Decent odds. If you want to be, you know, a little bit lower odds of a teaser or parlay, you know, go seven and a half to be a little bit safer. So then that way they can lose by a touchdown and you're okay. But if they lose this game, it should be very, very close. But I like the Texans pulling it off as they are the much better team. And the pass defense is has been excellent. I think Mixon has a big day on Thursday Night Football. Cowboys and Falcons is, uh, is one that could go either way. The Cowboys are plus two and a half going to Atlanta. And the Falcons take care of business here. The difference in this one, a couple differences. Both have both teams have a very solid offense. The Falcons are way more two-dimensional, while the Cowboys are more, more one-dimensional. Where the Falcons' defense is strong. Both these defenses are struggling in general. Where the Falcons' defense is really struggling is stopping the run. Cowboys aren't the best teams, you know, the best team running the football right now. They rely on the pass, and they'll be pretty productive that way. But the Falcons' game plan is hey. CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott, airing the ball downfield. You know, they can run the ball on us. They're not going to beat us running the ball on us. While the Falcons, the Cowboys have to game plan very much so for the pass. More importantly, where they also can run the ball and anybody can run the ball on the Cowboys right now. So I think the Falcons will be productive through the air and on the ground as they are the most two, more two-dimensional team in this game. I think Bijan has a pretty big game. He's been stepping up a little bit against those Feral matchups. It's another Feral matchup. Another thing, look at the team, the good offenses the Cowboys have played this year. They have not beaten those teams. All the teams they beat up on, they don't have the best offense. So they're going to go play against a very explosive offense led by Kirk Cousins. And again, they can throw, they can run on you. So everything kind of points towards the Falcons, but because how poor both these defenses are, maybe the Falcons are maybe playing a little bit better on the road. Kirk Cousins playing a little bit better on the road. Uh, they're at home in this game. Something clicked for the Cowboys at the end of that Niners game. CeeDee Lamb really got going, so maybe that carries over. So I could see it, but the matchup, everything I explained, I like the Falcons. 27-24 should be an interesting game. Just too close to call in terms of putting money on it. The Miami Dolphins are plus six heading to Buffalo, taking on those hot bills. Look, look like a juggernaut last week against the Seattle Seahawks. And, I mean, this is one of those ones you kind of have to take. You have to take the Bills straight up, and I would take the Bills minus six. And it's one of those ones where it makes so much sense. And if it doesn't hit, you go, hey, it, it was worth a shot. It made a lot of sense because the Miami Dolphins, even with Tua, Tua and the Dolphins cannot beat the Buffalo Bills. Doesn't mean it's going to last forever. There's going to be a time where they beat them. It could be this week because there's not a whole lot of tape on the you know, the Dolphins like full go, but the Bills did play them full go and they diced them up. I don't think the game's going to be quite like last time, but the Bills should have all kinds of success. The defense is playing great this year. I still wonder about the run defense. The last time these two teams played, the Dolphins were running very well on them early, but then they went away from it. Mike McDaniel went away from it. Tua was turning the ball over. 
Um, so I think the Dolphins will come out and pound the football. It'll be their best chance at winning this game, but they won't stick to the ground. The Bills are the better team. They have the matchup advantage. We've seen that over since Josh Allen's been in the league and been playing well for the Buffalo Bills. They're playing great on both sides of the ball. This one's definitely worth a shot. You pick the Bills, you take the Bills minus six. If the Dolphins win, it's like, wow, a little surprising. That was definitely worth a shot because just trends, what's been happening in this matchup, and the Dolphins are trying to bounce back. And Man, they played great on offense last week, and they played a much lesser defense than this week. You know, they played the Cardinals defense last week. The Bills are much better. Uh, and they had that game, and they couldn't win it. I, it's kind of a head scratch. Like, how did they not win that game? So, a little deflating as they try to get back on track. The Bills make sense in this game. 31-20 is what I got, covering that six. Almost like a trap because it's not seven. It's not seven and a half. So, they're they're making it you know, tempting to put money on the Bills win by seven or more here. But they they take care of business in this game. Let's see if they can do it again. Make sure to check out our trade deadline videos. A couple recently went up, and there's definitely more to come leading up to that next week trade deadline. Our week weekly pick show was a ton of fun. We laughed our asses off. That's up for week nine. Check all that out. Subscribe. Be much appreciated. Raiders versus the Bengals. I'm going to take the Bengals in this one. Didn't really hesitate. I think the Bengals will win it. The Raiders definitely have a chance, but the, didn't really hesitate with pick, picking the winner in this one. 24-19 is what I have, but... Yeah, I mean they the Bengals could win big. They kind of they seem to take care of business against the the weaker teams uh, rather than the good teams. So the Raiders aren't the best right now, but they put up fight with fights with teams. Seven and a half just seems like too much to to. And the Bengals could cover that. You know they could win in an ass beating. It's possible, but it, it's and I seen it bounce around from seven and a half to seven. It just all seems like too much given that every Bengals game seems to be pretty close unless. Ones like last week, they, they lost big. Even the Browns game was really close. Uh, every game seems close. And the offense can't is really good. It can't put a full game together. And the Raiders play pretty decent defense, you know, led by Max Crosby. But they play pretty uh, tough defense. And the Bengals defense, you can't really trust as well. It's not the best defense. It played better for a couple weeks there. So, I, again, they can win in an ass beating. I can see that scenario. But it is if we're picking against the spread, which I do for every game, force myself to pick every game, you know, against the spread. Seven and a half just seems seems a little, you know, a little too much. I guess the reason the Bengals could win big is the the the, the way to run it up against the Bengals is run it up, run the football. They they struggle stopping a run. The Raiders are the worst, by far the worst, running the football in football. So. Maybe they don't have that going for them in this game, and they rely on the pass, then, and then it could everything can kind of go south. But Bengals games seem to be close. Uh, you know, they, they can't put a full game together on either side of the ball. I mean, there's been some great games from the offense, but I'll go 24 19 Bengals in this one. Wouldn't touch it, though. Would not touch it because I could see multiple different scenarios in this one. Chargers in Browns. The Chargers are only favored by one and a half after the Browns shocked the world. They beat the Ravens. They look like a new team with Jameis Winston back. Cedric Tillman taking off. Nick Chubb kind of getting back going here. So people a little hot on the Browns. I like the Chargers in this game. I also like the under. The Chargers minus one and a half looks like a very solid bet right now. I know the Browns play really solid defense and they can hold the Chargers offense who has been a little slow this year, but recently they've been picking it up. Herbert been airing out, Lad McConkey going off, so you do have to worry about the run in the pass, but I do like the Browns defense. The Chargers aren't going to score a ton of points in this game, but I'd say not so fast in the Browns offense. They had a lot of turnover-worthy plays last week. The Chargers defense is better than the Ravens. I know that was hard to predict that going into the year nobody was predicting that but that's what it is right now Chargers defense can play they can create takeaways that's what they'll do they might even score on defense in this game so I like the Chargers uh, I'm not going to jump all in on that Browns offense quite yet 23-16 Chargers what I got they cover that one and a half they win this game I like the under at 43 but like I said Chargers could score on defense they can get multiple turnovers they can set themselves up in the red zone and they can end up scoring a lot more points and that could blow that but I feel pretty good I think this is like the most the Browns score I know the offense was explosive last week the Chargers defense is good they'll create turnovers so I feel pretty good about the range of 23 16 20 to 16 20 to 13 and again the Chargers can score on defense so that makes it a little scary but this game should stay under I like the way both these teams play defense but I'm surprised at the line in that game. Patriots at Titans. I'm going to go with New England in this game for multiple reasons. I like the matchup for them. I feel like it's going to be Jacoby Brissett, which I would love for May, May to play. He's looked pretty good. Big May fan. But a game like this, if you're trying to win, Brissett makes some sense. 
And I guess it depends on who's that quarterback for the Titans. I think they want Will Levis to come back here. But Brissett, not the greatest quarterback, but he takes care of the football while Will Levis turns the football over. Even Mason Rudolph turned the ball over last week a couple of times. So the Patriots could win just by not turning the ball over, making those plays, maybe scoring on defense. But they could also score on special teams. The Titans have maybe the worst special teams I've ever seen. So everything there says the Patriots win. But then if you want to follow a trend as well, a very weird trend, but teams that play the Lions the next week, they are not good. They And the Titans already aren't. They're not good. But they got destroyed by the Lions. They got worked by the Lions last week. They lose the week after. Teams lose after playing. And it's specifically 0-5 against the spread after playing the Lions this year. That is, or the last five, I should say. That is pretty crazy. The Patriots are plus 3.5. I'm a little surprised about that line, that it's that much, even with that hook on it, 3.5. So Vegas might know something that always makes it a little sketchy, but I like the Patriots plus three and a half. You know this game's going to be tight. You know it's going to come down to one, two, or three points. I think the Patriots win, not just because of the trend, but because things favor them. They have special teams going for them in this game, which is big. They have the turnover battle going for them in this game, so that's big. I think a low-scoring game, 16-13. Uh, yeah, I'm still waiting to see who plays quarterback in this game, but I am feeling the Patriots. I sh- it should stay under as well because these two teams have some of the worst offenses in football. And one's going to turn it over. The other one's going to play it super, super conservative, super safe because they know they're going to win the turnover battle. That's the Patriots. So 16-13, New England. And I know that's a bad game, but it's kind of an interesting game for kind of everything I said just to see how this end- ends up playing out here. Commanders versus Giants. It's actually a very intriguing one for multiple reasons. The last time these two teams played, it was a battle. It was close, and the Giants didn't even have a kicker in that game. If they had a kicker, they honestly, they probably would have won that game. But the, the Giants are about the same, except they have a kicker now since then. The Commanders are a lot better. They are a lot better on both sides of the ball since then specifically defense. The defense was one of the worst to start the year. Now it's playing a lot better. If you want to get even more specific, the pass rush has been awesome recently, and the Giants are injured on the offensive line. They can't protect Daniel Jones. Things aren't going great for the offense. So everything sides towards not only the commanders, but the commanders possibly could roll in this game because the defense can get pressure. They can stop Jones. They could create turnovers. And you know, the offense is going to move. They're going to score. They're going to score. They, they moved on the bears. They just couldn't punch it in the end zone, you know, until the Hill Mary, Hill Mary. Uh, but so everything kind of points towards the commanders having the matchup advantage and possibly winning big than winning by 10 rolling. So you may say, well, why aren't you betting on them? Well, there are a couple scary things here. One, it's a divisional, you know, rival game, and the Commanders are away. So you, you know, and the Giants could have won last time. So a little scary, but if you look at NFL history, teams that win dramatic fashion, emotional ways, the next week they have a letdown week. That it's always what happens. It seems like so, and they have that emotional, crazy win against the Bears. Uh, I'm not going to predict them to have an off week, even though history says that's what happens. I just love the matchup for them. Things are kind of down with the Giants. They, they play teams tough. They can't win games. They can't protect the quarterback. Daniel Jones isn't playing well. They're dropping the ball. Uh, you know, they have the bench Deontay Banks because effort. Now they're going to throw him back in there. The vibes aren't great for New York right now. The commanders are have been balling on offense. They're balling more on defense right now. The matchup favors them. Big thing is the Giants offensive line, I think. So we'll take the commanders 27-17. That should be a very interesting game. See how similar it is the last time or see how much the commanders defense specifically has come here. They should have a solid game. Remember to check out our other videos really covering the trade deadline right now. But Saints, Panthers, the Saints only have two wins this year. They came in the first two weeks of the season. One of those was the Panthers really beating up on them. Derek Carr is supposed to be back. They're getting a little healthier step by step as the Panthers aren't getting healthy. Holding guys out, trading guys like Deontay Johnson. They might trade more guys as the trade deadline approaches. So I like the Saints take care of business here. Everybody can move the ball in the Panthers' weak defense. Specifically against the run will be big for Kamara in the Saints. I think they will be very effective that way and they'll win this game. 27-16, just don't expect... Much from the Panthers here as they are sellers, as they are injured, and as they are almost throwing in the towel and just look, they're a full rebuild, looking for the future there. So Saints 27, Panthers 16. Uh, I like them covering that seven. I just wouldn't bet on it because it's a very big spread in a divisional game away for the Saints. So I tend to stay away from those types, but Saints should, they, they potentially could roll in this game, roll over the Panthers.
Broncos and Ravens should be a fun one, too. Really solid teams. The Broncos have been super impressive. They're rolling. They're playing pretty well on both sides of the ball. Bo Nix is playing better, been impressive. Ravens have been the hottest team in football until last week. They lost to the Browns. So, And they're favored by a whopping 9.5 points. And now we all can see a scenario. The Ravens do their thing. They, they, they roll someone. They dominate someone. They win huge in an ass kick and a snot pounding. We could see it happen, but it's, uh, it's very tough to sit here and predict that. Nine and a half seems a little dis- disrespectful to the Broncos. I will take the Ravens to win. Tough for the Broncos to catch the Ravens off a loss. You know they're going to bounce back and do things right, give the ball to Derrick Henry a little bit more than they did last time in Baltimore. It's going to be really tough for the Broncos, but they could win it. I'm going to go Ravens 26, Broncos 20. Uh, the Ravens defense has been struggling compared to past years. Look at last week and the Broncos offense is getting better. It feels like every single week, Bo Nick's been very impressive. So they can do some damage. They can do some damage against the Ravens. And so what I'm specifically predicting here is the Ravens will be able to move the ball. The Broncos defense has been really, really good. They haven't seen Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, you know, and now they add Deontay Johnson. It sounds like he's going to be the third receiver. Uh, to start, who knows how much we'll see of him, but and they're getting Mark, Mark Andrews a little bit more involved. The Broncos haven't seen that offense, and, and I, I think Derrick Henry has a pretty pretty good game, but the the Ravens could have scored more points last week. They moved the ball, just could, didn't get in, his, in the end zone as much as uh, you thought they could have, and we could see some of that again this week. The Broncos have the number three red zone defense, so I think the Ravens will... Hold the ball. They'll control the clock. They'll march down the field, but the Broncos could have some big wins in the red zone, and which kind of keeps it close here. I think the Broncos are capable of scoring more than 20 points on the Ravens' defense. I'm just kind of predicting in Baltimore, the Ravens really hold the ball. They drain the clock and play Ravens' brand football here. So 26-20, Ravens. I could see an ass-beating. Vegas thinks it's going to be an ass-beating with that line. They're they're making attempting to take the Broncos. They want you to take the Broncos. It's just too much. You know, I don't know how we can sit here and say the Bron- uh, the Ravens are going to cover that spread for sure. I'm not going to bet on this game at all, but 26-20 Ravens is what I got. Jags versus Eagles. The Eagles wearing those throwbacks, those Kelly Greens. Those are clean. The- I like the I like the Eagles to win in a snap pounding and ass beating at least in this one. It it really favors them on top of that. On, it favors them on top of them being the much better team on them. You kind of get that feeling the Eagles are back. You know the Eagles are coming back. They got their mojo back. Hurts got his mojo back. Those receivers been back for a few weeks. It's looking good. The defense is back and it's been some time. Looking at early last year, maybe even the year before. Uh, so matchup favors them. We'll talk about that in a second. They're the far better team. But the Jags, multiple things. They're beat up. Christian Kirk's out for the year. And then Brian Thomas, year, different things. He could play this week or he can miss a couple weeks. We'll see. He's a rookie. And they're in my next point, they're they just traded Cam Robinson, which I know he's been hot and cold and he's been injured, but I thought he's played pretty well when he's been in. They just traded him. They were looking to trade Christian Kirk before he got injured. It feels like they're in sell mode right now. So that kind of brings down the mojo and the opposite of the Eagles here. So all of that being said, it, everything kind of sides towards the Eagles, even though it's a Doug Peterson revenge game here. Um, you know, And that's the thing with Brian Thomas. Like, rookie, been awesome. Do you want to jeopardize, jeopardize his future, his career while you're in – are you in sell mode? Are you – how much are you trying to are you trying to just go all out, make the playoffs still? So I would recommend sitting him unless you're really if he's good to go. So I don't know. But Eagles 31, Jags 16. They cover the spread. It's just not a spread I love actually putting money on, especially with the hook. Uh, but I would definitely, if you're doing a parlay, do the Eagles money line. If you're doing a teaser, the Eagles minus two and a half. You can even bump that up a little bit. I mean, if you just want to bump it down to six and a half, they just win by a touchdown. That's great too. I will definitely be using that. I end up tweeting a parlay slash tweezer on game day, my last second thoughts. And we went the last two weeks, uh, we, we hit both those, some monstrous ones. So uh, make sure that's a good reason to follow our Twitter. But yeah, Jags run too much man coverage. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, they're going to torch that. Uh, Jags will be so worried about stopping the pass that they won't be able to stop that Barkley will probably run well as well. Defense is playing well. Eagles are going to win this game. 31-16. It would be a hell of an upset if they didn't, but 31-16, Eagles roll over the Jags on Sunday. Bears and Cardinals, probably the toughest one to pick this week, and for a couple reasons here. 
the matchup may favor the Bears. That makes me tempted to pick the Chicago Bears here, and I am monitoring some of their injuries. Uh, offense line got a little bit beat up last week, and there's been some key guys on defense out, but Brisker, Kyler Gordon, could these guys be back? Certainly. Defense plays great either way. But the matchup could favor the Bears. Why? That defense might be the best in football. There's not too many insanely good ones in the Bears. I'd probably rank them number one right now. Uh, I guess it's debatable. And so they can slow down the Cardinals offense. Cardinals offense looks really good right now. Kyler Murray playing very good, but they've been stopped by pretty decent defenses and the Bears defense might be the best they've seen. So the Bears can stop that offense and it feels like anybody can score in the Cardinals. They're not going to give up an insane amount of points. It did to the commanders, but even though the Bears struggle on offense, anybody can kind of move the ball. DeAndre Swift's been running well recently. He can move the, they can pound the football, control the clock, win the game. So that'd be a reason to go with the Bears. Uh, and they maybe caught the Cardinals at a good time because they've been super inconsistent, but they just won two in a row. They're really going to win three in a row. So that makes me want to pick the Bears. I've thought about that stuff. The Cardinals are getting better. The offense is playing a lot better. I think they'll be able to move the ball on the Bears. Getting in the end zone in the red, you know, from the red zone is a different question. But it is so difficult to sit here and pick the Bears away and against good teams. They had a good team last week, but the Bears cannot play well away. They cannot play well on offense away. They were really bad in offense the last game. Fourth quarter, it was pretty solid once DeAndre Swift broke that big run, but there was major struggles on offense. There's worries about the offensive line. Uh, Caleb Williams has not played good away, uh, You know, and, and there's uh, bad play, play calling moments for sure. So this is one of those ones where it's like you want to pick the Bears because the matchup, but I, I, can I sit here and pick something that just hasn't happened that we haven't seen yet? So that's my issue with the Bears here. So they got to go out and win this game. That'll be huge. And then we get a little bit more confident. I'm definitely confident with the Bears at home, like even against good teams. The Bears play, we haven't, they haven't beat a good team yet, but if they're at home against a good team, look at some of those teams in the division when they play the – I don't know if I love how they match up with the Packers, but when they play the Lions even and the Vikings, like they might win those games at home. But they got to prove something away here. I'll go Cardinals 23-20. They're playing a lot better. They're getting some confidence going. So um, this would be a, this should be a really interesting game here. The Lions at one for 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 a reason there. So Bears got to make a statement. They got to prove something here. I'm really looking forward to watching that one. I mean, the Bears Commanders game was bizarre last week from start to finish, not even just the ending. I thought there was some things that were a little wild in that game. Um, so kind of curious about this one. Lions and Packers should be a good one. The Lions are minus three and a half. And I, I with this prediction, I am counting on Love playing. He very well could be out. Some people think he's going to be out, but he's pushing to play. Even with Malik Willis, I, I, you know, I wouldn't pick the Packers to win with Malik Willis. Uh, but I think they actually can kind of keep it close, surprisingly. But I, I'm not an injury expert. I'm going to predict that Love plays. I definitely could be wrong. I'll predict the Lions win by by a bit more if Malik Willis plays. But I don't think they win in an ass kick or anything like that. I saw this game on the schedule a couple weeks ago, and I saw it, and I was like, I am picking the Packers in that game, and I am confident everyone's going to pick the Lions. I'm going to pick the Packers. I love the matchup. The Packers are a different animal in Lambeau. They kind of save stuff. LaFleur is a great coach, save stuff for games like this. It's a, maybe the toughest matchup for the Lions this year where they haven't seen too many tough ones. Not, not that they didn't win, get, win big games, statement games, but this is probably the toughest you know matchup for them. So I was loving the Packers in this game, but because of the injuries, even if Love plays, he's not 100%. I don't know if we've seen him 100% yet. Uh, beginning of the Eagles game, week one in Brazil, that was it. And Jair Alexander has won the monitor too, star corner. Look at the Packers defense with and without him this year, a night and day difference, and you're playing the best offense in football in this game. I think it'll be a lot of running clock. Both teams, will, they're, in games like this, they focus on, yeah, run the ball, take your time, uh, which, drain it, which win the time of possession. So maybe a little less scoring than expected. I also could see a scenario where there's a shootout if Love plays because you have two high-powered offenses, but... I could, if Love plays, I could see the Packers winning. I was originally predicting it because how beat up they are. I will take right now the best team in football, Detroit Lions. Uh, but I still like them. The Packers could win. I like them to cover. It's a little tricky to say that right now because we don't know who's playing quarterback or cornerback, like I mentioned. Uh, but you can use the Packers plus 7F no matter which quarterback, honestly. But you feel a little bit better about it if Love is there. It, wait, because if Willis is ends up being for sure the quarterback, that line will actually... Uh, the the lines will be favored by more, so then you can have some fun with that as well. But Packers make things interesting in this game. But I would tease the Packers; they could pull the upset. Like I said, like two weeks ago, and even before last week, 
I was so confident with the Packers in this game, but getting a little beat up um, was pretty tough. But the Lions, it is tough to pick against them because how good they are right now. The team to beat them and the Chiefs, definitely the team in the beat. Team to beat in the NFC, the Detroit Lions. We'll see. This game should be fun in the NFC North battle. Rams and Seahawks is another one. I think it could be pretty similar to the the Cowboys Falcons. Another game that can go either way, close in terms of the game and the line. I'll take the Rams. They took a massive step up last week uh, as they got their guys back, Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. So that's awesome. Stafford. Somehow I think Stafford's like a little underrated, even though everyone everyone knows he's good. Uh, phenomenal, smart quarterback. Uh, Kyron Williams could could obviously play as well, and you can throw and you can run on the Seahawks defense. So which Seahawks are going to show up? One week they look really good, and one week they're awful. Um, so that's the thing. I trust the Rams' offense to show up. They should be able to throw the ball. They should be able to run the ball. Defense, I, I don't know if I fully trust the defense in this game, but then you look at Seattle. I guess the defense could show up, and they might not. The offense could show up. They might not. We're monitoring the DK injury. I'm not an injury expert, but I think he'll play. They can't run the ball as, as good as you expect them to. I just It's a mystery with the Seahawks. I trust the Rams. Uh, we know they'll play well on offense, and I do think they're the better team with the guys they got back, back, and they are they are back. So I will take the Rams 28-24 in that one, but it could be a little – it's just which Seahawks show up. That's really what it is here, but we'll take L.A. as they start to heat up and maybe could trend in the direction of making the playoffs and possibly winning that division, which is pretty open right now. Sunday night football, the Colts and the Vikings. I'll take the Vikings 27-23. Joe Flacco is playing for the Colts. If it was Richardson, I would lock in the Vikings. I would lock them in. I don't know if they would win huge. I probably would predict them to win big, but uh, just because inexperienced quarterbacks really struggle with Flores is confusing defense, but veteran quarterbacks, it doesn't confuse them, and they're going to find that open guy, that soft spot in the zone. Flacco's that veteran guy. You know, I know he's a little older, but he he is smart enough to understand that defense. So I could I could see the Colts having a day through the air, Downs, Pittman. I could definitely see it as the Vikings defense is training in the wrong direction. Um, the Col- It's a little tricky because they play with both quarterbacks so far. Colts haven't been good with teams that blitz so far. The offense hasn't been good with teams that blitz. That blitz, the Vikings do blitz, but again, the Vikings de- pass defense not that good. Flacco could pick. You could argue both sides of the Colts offense there. Uh, Taylor should play solid. I don't think he goes bonkers against the Vikings run defense, but he should play solid. Um, I trust the Vikings offense in this game, though. The, this You look at their schedule. They had an impressive schedule. This is probably, and the Colts defense has been playing better. It's been, been it's been playing better, and they have DeForest Buckner back for a second week in a row now, so they are better than that bad spot during the season. But this is still probably the worst defense the Vikings have played this year. Uh, you know, the Rams defense isn't that great. They moved the ball on them. You know, the score didn't really show it, but uh, this is probably the worst defense in their home in primetime football. As a Vikings fan, I know they don't really play too well in primetime football, history says. Some, they randomly have a really good game, but... Um, I trust the offense in this game. I trust the offense on the ground and through the air. They should be uh, two-dimensional for sure. Uh, I can see Flacco just dicing up the Vikings defense, or I can see the Vikings getting a lead, and then the Colts are put in obvious passing situations, and then they struggle with the the blitz, the Vikings fast blitz, uh, and then maybe they struggle to score. So we can see a couple different scenarios there, but the Colts offensive line should... Should do pretty well, but if for some reason, whenever they play like heavy blitz teams, it's you know when they play normal teams, the Colts' offense line looks like the best in football. But when they play blitz teams, it's like it's a little sketchy. So, um, curious about that. Another thing, uh, the just how the NFL operates. Sometimes I don't like this, obviously, but the Vikings. Everyone watched the game on Thursday night. We knew what happened, with, especially how it ended with the officiating. Could there be? I hope not, because I hate if the league of uh, you know operates this way but could the Vikings be getting some makeup calls this week and it wouldn't make any sense how that's the Colts problem and why the Colts get punished for that but I've seen it before across the league everyone's seen it so that might favor the Vikings as well it's a little bonus thing I'm not going to base anything off that it's a little ridiculous but I'm curious to see that if that's a thing I hope not because that'll be um, punishing the Colts for no reason that'd be very stupid so uh, this could be an interesting game on Sunday Night Football. Let's see if the Vikings drop three straight, and the Colts know they have a much better chance with Flacco, so they turn to to hit the veteran there. And Monday Night Football between the Bucks and the Chiefs, and you see all the picks against the spread recapped here to my side, but this matchup really favors the Chiefs. The Bucks are a pretty good team. 
Uh, they have an explosive offense, but their two star receivers are out. I think Kate, excuse me, Cade Otten has a good game in this one, but it is a bad matchup for that, especially without their two receivers. The Chiefs defense is playing awesome right now. I don't expect the Bucks to do a whole lot. And the Chiefs offense hasn't been the greatest, but again, second week with DeAndre Hopkins. We know what Patrick Mahomes and company have. That we know what they got. You know, they they can show at any time. And the Bucks pass defense is brutal. It's atrocious. It's it's atrocious. It's horrendous. So this is the breakout. The break it's crazy because they're undefeated. The breakout game for Mahomes in this passing game as they air it out all over that Bucks defense. A brutal matchup for Tampa Bay. 30 to 17, the Chiefs' best offensive performance here. And the Chiefs win. Wouldn't touch it, I guess, It'd be just because the the nine points is a lot. You could tease it, bring it down to you know, three or whatever for the Chiefs if you want. But recapping the picks against spread, Texans plus two, Falcons plus two and or minus two and a half, the Buffalo Bills minus six, the Raiders plus seven and a half, the Chargers minus one and a half, New England plus three and a half. And I highlighted the ones I really liked. Those two I just listed. Uh, I really did. Buffalo I liked. Houston looks pretty decent. Um, Washington minus three and a half. New Orleans minus seven. Denver plus nine and a half. Philadelphia minus seven and a half. Arizona minus one. That's a toss-up game. Green Bay plus three and a half. Monitor monitor Love and Alexander. Uh, The Rams minus two. The Colts plus five. That's a tricky one as well, but the Colts could win that game. So, And the Chiefs minus nine, even though it's a big spread. So there you have it for my week nine score predictions. My, I love doing this video. I love our weekly pick show. It was a blast last night. Uh, Halloween pick We have trade videos up. There are more to come. We have power rankings. We have you covered more than anyone out there. So join us. Like, subscribe to the notification. I mean, much appreciated. But thanks for watching this video. That's going to do it. Goodbye.